So I'm still getting quite excited about the tunnel. We're already now entering what appears in my book to be a cutting. You know, if they wanted to open the tunnel there, if you can see it, Amy, if they wanted to open that tunnel, could you put barges through there and have bats living in there at the same time? Who is this? <laughs> Uh, good morning everybody, welcome to uh, the Whitewicks. My name is Paul, this is Rebecca. We make videos about old landscapes, uh, old uh, abandoned railways, abandoned canals, old Roman roads, you name it, whatever sort of ticks our interest at the time. Today, we have a guide. Today we're exploring Basingstoke Canal and certainly the last five miles of it. And we have a guide called Matt. Hello. You can follow Matt on Twitter. I shall put his uh, little link here. Matt has a knowledge on canals, so we have nicked his knowledge today for this short trip. Anyway, <laughs> onwards to the Basingstoke Canal. So you find us in this beautiful part of North Hampshire, looking for what remains of the Basingstoke Canal. Now, we're not obviously looking for the entire canal because it goes all the way up to London. But what we are looking for is what's referred to as the last five miles. So that's pretty much from Basingstoke itself across to Greywell Tunnel. First of all though, you find us nearer Basingstoke looking for a little tunnel bridge. Right, whilst I, whilst I film Matt coming out the hedge, um, we were trying to get down to the, um, the bridge, the uh, tunnel bridge. A little yard down there, it's got a little fire going, so we're a bit skeptical about getting down there. We couldn't get down that side because it's too damn steep. Um, I'm wondering if what you stood on there, Matt, is maybe some kind of um, old spoil heap. It certainly seemed like that. It's from, out of place it is, isn't it? Very out of state from where they are, the, cut, the cuttings out and everything else that was there. But it's an incredibly steep cutting for a small bridge. Ah. I see water. Stagnant water. Yeah, stagnant water. I think you can even smell the water a little bit perhaps. So in terms of water settled in canal, this is the first point um, east of Basingstoke where there is obviously a significant amount of water. So we've been chatting with Matt online for sort of a good month or so um, about this canal and others as well. Matt sent us a whole bunch of huge detailed sort of report on what you can see in this area and on this part of the canal um, to the west of the Greywell Tunnel. So we just thought, well, we could take Matt's um, detailed sort of a bit of paper out or we could actually just ask Matt to come along. So Matt kindly said, yes, he'd love to. Um, I said, I think you was love there, Matt, but I don't think you actually said you'd love to, did you? Well, I think we forced Matt to come I, I out. I couldn't come up with a good enough excuse not yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, <laughs> tough luck. He's walking with us whether he likes it or not. Right, onwards, Matt, towards Greywell Tunnel and all the interesting things along the way. Let's go. Right, so Matt, we're coming up to a bridge that you were keen to show us for a, a very quirky reason. It's, this is Brick Kiln Bridge. Okay. And the two, um, what's the word, parapets? Yep. They're um, remarkably different. Okay. So this one has got quite a peak to it. It has. And this side, I guess, is different. That is very different, isn't it? It's, it's sloped it's almost completely. Almost peaks. The peak is here, isn't it? Over, over one side. And do we know why, or we just... We don't. Well, we don't. No, but somebody may well do. So, Brick Kiln Bridge, we've got a couple more bridges of interest, and then we've got the uh, Greywell Tunnel. So, this, Matt, is the, the junction, I want to call it. You said the junction. Yeah, this is, so, main line of the canal carries on sort of 90 degrees. Yep, which is over that way. We can carry on walking here, up what's called okay. the Nately Brickworks Arm. Brickworks, you said, opened like a hundred years I after. I think or... it was late 19th century. Right. I don't think it um, ran for that long. I think the quality of the bricks was pretty, uh, pretty poor. Now this is really interesting because before the tunnel was built, which we we'll see shortly, which is that way, they were, the original plan of this canal was to head north. Is that right, Matt? Yep, a big loop north round a village called Rotherwick. Yep. 
and that would have taken the canal sort of a seven and seven and a half mile loop right around um, to basically the other side of the, the Greywell Tunnel. And what's really odd is we think it would have taken this, um, that, that route there, but this wasn't opened for a hundred years after the canal was built. So we're trying to work out the logistics of that. We're trying to work out maybe if this was built and then abandoned before they decided to go that way for the tunnel. Um, we're not 100% sure on that. So what do you want to do, Matt? Are we going to walk up there for a little bit and have a look? Yep, yeah, we're walking. Okay, well, let's do that. We've just been down there to where there's like a little outlet or uh, some kind of culvert or something. Uh, maybe an outlet for the actual um, arm of the canal. And we've also seen what's there, which is like, um, almost, uh, we're guessing it may be like a little jetty sticking out perhaps. Matt hasn't seen that before, having walked up here quite a few times I believe before. So you do find something every time you come out it seems. According to the Basingstoke Canal logbook, the hull of the country's oldest horse-drawn narrowboat was uncovered in the Brickworks Arm in 1985. Well, we're going to head back down to the junction, we're going to turn left and we're going to head east uh, towards the uh, tunnel. So what Matt has just pointed out is really, really, it's just a brick when you look at it. You wouldn't even notice this if you didn't know what you were looking for. There's a groove in the bridge. Why is there a groove in the bridge, Matt? It's from tow ropes from horses. Um, so when it's taut and the horse is, uh, is pulling the, the, the boat along, over years and years of uh, friction against the brick, yeah. it's, it's worn it away and it's, it's quite that smooth. Is, it is, isn't it? And what's really interesting is well, that would completely add up. So without stepping back too far, you've got the bridge there um, and the horse would clearly have to go up there to the left, which is not a great design if you were a canal design engineer. Okay, we're here. We're at the tunnelage. I mean, you know, I can get a couple of good shots in there. So this end, um, pretty sure is obviously home to a lot of rare bats. So a bit like horse path then? Yeah, exactly like a horse path. So what if they wanted to open it up and make it a usable tunnel again? So I'm guessing they wouldn't be able to because the species diversity here is hugely important. Why? Well, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, I know a little bit, but it would be a very sketchy answer. But I know someone that would know the answers. Let me give her a ring. Okay, it's ringing. Um, Amy, how's it going? Hi, Anne, it's going pretty well. Amy, can, can we talk bats for a second? Bats? Do you mean these kind of bats? No, no, yeah. um, like bats as in like, um, you know, bats. You mean one of these? Yes, that's it. Right, so from an environmentalist point of view and from an ethical point of view, can we talk about bats and this tunnel? Uh, don't you already have an environmentalist degree, Paul? Um, yeah, admittedly I have, um, but I think I was probably away they did the, the, the ethics side of things. Um, and besides, they really didn't have a teacher how to sit on a fence. Ooh, that sounds a bit painful. Okay, so what do you need to know? Okay, so why exactly is species diversity important? And not just like gen general, bats in particular perhaps? Yeah, species diversity is absolutely crucial to life. So each form of species, i.e. bats, insects, plants, are entwined in the chain of the ecosystem, both locally and further afield. For example, some species only exist because they specifically rely on another species. So that might be a plant, it might be a species of predator that relies on a particular type of prey. So if you take one of these links out of the ecosystem chain, it causes knock-on effects. And of course, that essentially causes a collapse over a period of time. But they're just as important as daytime predators as well. But they're obviously the nighttime predators. They provide an amazing service to agriculture and they maintain populations of insects 
Bats are actually really good. They eat mosquitoes, so they're a great ally to us as humans. And basically, they can tell us, in a nutshell, a great deal about the environment around us just by their presence alone. All right, that's great. So is there a way that bats and people can sort of cohib cohabit? So, you know, if they wanted to open the tunnel there, if you can see it, Amy, if they wanted to open that tunnel, could you put barges through there and have bats living in there at the same time? Um, I think there might be some split opinions on this matter. Everyone's going to have their own view. Um, however, from personal experience, I've actually seen bats habitating tunnels and active tunnels as well around the country on various canals. They do seem quite comfortable in there. They've adapted well to human presence and the noises of narrow boats going through. Um, I've heard of them roosting under railway bridges as well, uh, quite close to canals too, and they seem quite comfortable in those environments too. I think if a particular species is quite rare, I do think that there's going to be a lot of reluctance to actually disturb them. But if we take particular care, think about the bats that are living there and have a general respect for creatures, I think it's really important as humans that we actually embrace and respect fellow wildlife and learn to coexist with them. All right. Thanks, Amy. That was really comprehensive. Um, right. Cheers for that. We'll see you later. Super. Great to see you. As with Sabaton, it's very bowed in certain places. Um, we think we can see a collapse, and I would say, looking at this, 100 yards in. Right so I wonder if the portal, the hole, yeah. would have been around here. Right, and that adds up, because right here, you've got some flat work that way there. So I reckon that is certainly evidence, isn't it? So I reckon right here, this is the tunnel portal. Right, so the final thing we want to do, Matt, we're not going to go to the... Um, eastern end because it's, as you said it's very very well documented hundreds of pictures we'll even show you some pictures um we'll steal some from matt probably um but what we're going to do is we what we don't know about is shafts there were definitely shafts used to build the tunnel but we don't know how many we don't know if they've been infilled we don't know what state they're in if they're still, we know they got a couple wrong didn't we i think i say wrong. Al alignments the yeah, alignment was slightly. Which is brilliant, which is just that I love that fact. I love the fact that if you go in there, you can find a shaft sort of covering where it would have been, but it wasn't quite in the middle, <laughs> it was just, just off to the left. Or just a quick left, right. Yeah. You don't often see that though, do you? No, normally they're dead on. It's like yes, amazing how they've managed to do it. We're used to railway tunnels, That's we're used to railway right. tunnels where it was much more of a science. Of course, yeah, of course, <laughs> sorry, Matt's, Matt's a bit bitter about that. We're railways, it's canals. Sorry, Matt, a little bit more advanced, a little more these, are, these are proper tunnels, yeah, yeah. <laughs> proper, proper tunnels. But just get and get your shovel. So we're probably now stood about 200 yards from the entrance to the um, western portal of the Basingstoke Greywell Tunnel. Now we're on top of the alignment here and we're on like a bit of a basin. Now I reckon this would line up very well with the collapse that we saw. And I reckon you don't want to stand in that water over there for that reason. I wonder if that sunken bit of land there is... Yeah. We're only 20 yards up the height of the, the water level of the tunnel, aren't we? So I reckon that could well be where the collapse is. Uh, easier said than done. Probably do better to okay. go that way. Cuts right across. Us. Yes. I mean, the big question is, look at this. Is that a shaft or is it just some kids digging out a hole? I don't know. But what we, that's not what we've seen on the map. What we've seen on the map is just here through this hedge. Um, again, still above the alignment of the canal. And here is a huge crater, almost too big. Wow. We're gonna make some big assumptions again before we close off because we're just headed north a little bit further and <clears throat> Another big pond, another dark uh, pond. We've got spoil, potential spoil heaps on this side. Everything looks very man-made here. There's channels cut everywhere. Um, and we're wondering if that is maybe again where they dug out a shaft and they moved it in a different way. It doesn't look quite the same as Sapperton in terms of the shafts. And it was the same guy, Charles Jones. Charles Jones, yes. Yep. So he was in charge of Sapperton Tunnel for a little bit. He was. Uh, a tunnel from 
Manchester. Yep. Came down and did Sapperton yep. for quite a while. Dug most of it, then was sacked, and then ended up doing uh, and he did, did. here. And did he, he lived at the other end, I, I read. Uh, from he had a house, house, or an engineer's house somewhere near the East Portal. Yeah, um, but yeah, so we're going to make an assumption that this quite possibly was um, another at least sort of where a shaft would have been we if you know or if we've missed some notes and you know how many shafts were dug and sunk originally to build this it's a thousand yards if you go by the same um workings as sapperton you are probably looking at least eight or nine along here okay so from the from the the Greywell hill the um basingstoke canal we're going to bid you farewell and um, don't forget to subscribe we always say that because um a lot of you watch but don't subscribe a big thanks to Matt, our guest today, and our tour guide along this um, stretch of the uh, Basingstoke Canal. Um, and we will see you uh, next time. Probably an abandoned railway, abandoned canal, old Roman road, who knows. Thanks for watching, appreciate your support. See you next time. <laughs>